Hello and welcome to Bud Explains, where I take a subject, be that rules, history or a concept from the role-playing world, and try to explain it to you in a way that I hope helps you understand how it works. Today's explanation is hypergeometry in Delta Green, the role-playing game. Before we start, it's worth mentioning that this is material from the Handler's Guide, so if you're a player and want to keep this kind of thing a mystery, then stop watching now. Before we talk about the nature of hypergeometry, it would be prudent to discuss the nature of magic. A belief of every culture around the globe, magic is best described as a powerful force that can make dangerous or what we deem impossible things to happen. Delta Green coined the term hypergeometry a long time ago due to the association magic often has with shapes, numbers and mathematics. Hypergeometric techniques have the ability to alter reality. Everything from the mathematics of the precise nature of making a potion to inscribing protective circles to the impossible angles that exist within the sunken city of Relier has been somehow passed down from the great old ones that once called Earth their domain. Humans, in an ultimate act of hubris, have always tried to take a power far beyond their ability to even remotely understand and harness it for themselves. It is described in the Handler's Guide as a live circuit that flows with infinite energy that exists beyond the four dimensions that human consciousness exists in, and that humans that alter their perception can tap into that circuit and focus that energy. Magic takes many forms. From that of shamans hallucinating on drug concoctions, drawing mandalas, to scientists in way beyond their depth summoning entities from the sky using intricate technology, the mathematics behind the hypergeometrical technique is the same, and affords the same or similar results, with generally the only difference is being cultural. In the game, hypergeometry is either a ritual or an object that will produce a predicted effect, with the person using the hypergeometry being known as the operator. Using these techniques always costs the operator in some way, whether that be willpower, hit points or worse, power points, and always san. In game terms, this is the activation cost. Whenever hypergeometry is used, it also requires a ritual activation role. The impossibility of the changes made by the operator always costs those present san. Okay, so let's talk about the differences between rituals and objects. A ritual is the likes of chants, spoken words, somatic movements or preparations that connect the human consciousness to the hypergeometric circuit. In order to be able to do this, the operator must first study and understand what they are doing, and there may be further requirements such as it must be done underground or within sight of the open sea. The ability to conjure effects that bend reality can also lead to the operator becoming addicted to hypergeometry. Objects can be imbued with special powers that allow the user to bring hypergeometrical effects into our reality. These do not require ritual activation roles, they simply have a cost that is paid to produce the required results. In order for an operator to learn a ritual, the first thing that is required is belief. If they don't believe it will work, it won't. It's that simple. The human mind needs to disconnect from reality in order to truly understand a hypergeometric ritual. Rituals have an intrinsic cost involved in learning them, time and san. The time must be uninterrupted and some even require certain skills to learn. At the end of the study period, the operator has to fail a san check in order to learn the ritual. It's also worth pointing out that for the most part, rituals take weeks or months to learn. Rituals vary in complexity, from the likes of concentrating on a symbol of power to will an effect into existence to mass sacrifice, recitation of runes and the like. This submersion into the realms of the unnatural can sometimes also increase that skill. As a general idea, the complexity of a ritual mirrors its power level, but that is not always the case. To activate a ritual, the operator must roll under the chance of 99 minus their current san. If they have a copy of the instructions of the ritual at hand, they may even get a bonus to casting it. A successful roll means just that, the effect happens. A failed roll means one of two things, either nothing happens and half the sand required is used, or they can force it by sheer willpower and spend the point of power to make it happen. Artifacts are triggered by doing whatever is required to activate it. It's worth mentioning that witnessing a hypergeometric effect causes the same sand loss as the operator loses due to seeing things that man was not meant to see. Okay, to summarise. Hypergeometry is a term coined by Delta Green to encompass the reality-altering effects of magic due to the apparent mathematical components involved. Hypergeometric effects can be brought into existence by rituals that must be learned or by objects that have the ability to produce hypergeometric effects. Rituals can cost willpower, hit points and power to use and there is always a hit to sun. To learn one takes weeks or months of study followed by a failed sun roll in order for them to disconnect with reality enough to comprehend what they need to do. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like and share it, and make sure to subscribe for more Bud Explains videos in the future.
Potrauce.